Alright then gang, so we saw in the last video that we prompted the user with some options and we said choose an option A, S or T to either add an item, save the bill or add a tip. Now I know we've not got a function for this but we're just asking them to choose an option at the minute and then we just print it out to the console whatever option they choose. So right here I chose S and then I also said F as well which wasn't an option but we still printed that out so we're getting whatever a user is typing in. Now I want to introduce you to switch statements in Go and how we can basically analyze this variable or see what it is and dependent on the value of that execute a different bit of code because the code we execute is going to be different if they enter A or S or T or something else entirely like F. So let's get rid of this print line first of all. We'll close the console as well. We don't need that for now. And instead, let's do a switch. So a switch is pretty much the same as in any other programming language. We say switch and then we put whatever we want to evaluate. We want to evaluate the option to see what that is. And then we open up our curly braces and then we can specify different cases. We can specify a case where the value of this is A or where the value is S or where it's T or the default case where it doesn't match any of those. So the way we do this is by saying case and then whatever we expect the option to be. So a string in our case and I could say A. So if the case is A, I could do something like FNT dot print line and just say you chose A. Now I could add another case. So down here I could say case and then this time it would be T. And then inside here, I would say FMT dot print line. Oops, if I can spell this correctly, print line. And then inside here, you chose T. And then finally, I'll do a case for S. And then FMT dot print line. You chose S. All right. So this switch statement right here is now evaluating the value of option and it's looking at these different cases. Now, if the option is A, if we type A and press enter, then it's going to fire this code. Obviously, we'll do something different later, but it's going to fire this code and it doesn't fire the code right here. If the option is T, it fires this code and none of this or this. And if the option is S, it fires this code and nothing else. Now, we also have a default case. And this fires a chunk of code if none of the rest of the options were chosen. Now, we don't want them to choose any other letter, only A, T or S. So what I'm going to do is say FNT dot print line. And then right here, I'll just say that was not a valid option dot dot dot. And then under that, what I'll do is fire prompt options, this function right here. And pass in the bill. Remember, we have access to the bill because we took it in the first time round. So if they say F, for example, then we get this log to the console and then we fire this whole function again and it asks them to choose a letter again. So it kind of recycles the function because they can't choose anything else, only A, T or S. So let's give this a whirl. I'm going to open this up and clear the console. Oops, not cleat, should be clear. All right, and then run the file. And anything for the bill name doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to first of all add an option that doesn't exist like P. And we can see that was not a valid option. And we get those options again. If I choose S, then it says you chose S. All right. So inside here, we can fire different code now dependent on what option they choose. So let's start with option A right here. So in here, what do I want to do if they choose option A? Well, I want to ask them what item they want to add. And I also want to ask them what's the price of this. So we're going to need input from a user twice, once for the item name and once for the item price. So what I'm going to do is say name for the item name and underscore because I don't need the error. And that's colon equal to get input. That was the function we created earlier to get a user input. I remember in here, we pass in the prompt. So the string that we tell the user first of all, and then the reader. So we have the reader right here because we earlier created that. But I also need to pass in that prompt, that message. So I'll say, what's the item name? And then we pass in the reader like so. 
So we're going to get that information from the user and that's going to be stored in name. After they've done that, I also want the price. So I'm going to say the price and then underscore because we don't need the error. And that's going to be equal to get input. And inside here, I'll say item price. And then we pass in the reader again. So we're getting two bits of information from them now. The name of the item they want to add and the price. And instead of printing this down here, how about we print the name and the price back so they can see that. All right then. So down here for this option, the tip, I also want to get information from the user, but this time only one piece of information, and that is the tip value. So what I will say is tip and then underscore is equal to get input, and then the prompt is going to be enter tip amount, and we'll say that's going to be in dollars, like so, and then pass in the reader as well. And that's going to be stored now, whatever they type in, in tip, and then down here, I'm just going to print out the tip, like so. Okay then, so let's give this a whirl. I'm going to now open up the terminal and clear all this junk. And then I'm going to run the file again. And the build name doesn't really matter. And then I'll say add item first of all, item name pi, and then the item price for 99 and we can see pi and 499. So we successfully captured that information. All right, so let's run the program again and try the tip, any old name, and then add a tip. And the tip amount is gonna be 45, and we see that back as well. All right then, so we have successfully now created a switch statement with loads of different cases for A, T, or S, and also a default case in case the answer something else entirely. Now, next up, we need to take this tip right here and also the price and turn them into floats because these must be floats. If we take a look at the bill over here, the tip is a float and also the price of the items is a float in this map. Now, when we take data from a user input, automatically that is a string. So we can't add strings to be the tip or the items in the map. So we're gonna have to turn those into floats and we'll do that next.